Hi everybody and welcome back to Lost Genre Reddit Stories. This post is from the subreddit Relationships and it's by user SecondWife9. My husband, 44 male, told me he wished I, 37 female, was dead instead of his first wife. I'm devastated. My husband Nick was married to his first wife Vanessa for 5 years and they had two amazing kids, Luke, 15 male, and Lila, 13 female. Sadly, Vanessa died in an accident 11 years ago when the kids were very young. I started dating Nick 8 years ago and we started off very slowly for obvious reasons. Nick has always been a little bit more distant than anyone I'd ever been with, but he and the kids lost Vanessa so young that I understood it. After 3 years of dating, Nick asked me to marry him and I moved in. I've always had a really great relationship with Luke and Lila and they were happy for me to marry their dad. I had wanted an actual wedding, nothing big, but Nick really didn't want one so we got married at the courthouse with just Luke and Lila present. We had a really fast engagement but it worked for all of us. I have loved being Luke and Lila's stepmom and officially adopted them after I found out I was pregnant with our son Casey, two male. The kids have been so great with Casey and help out so much. Nick was wonderful during the pregnancy and had always been a really loving dad and husband. But Nick has been pulling away a lot over the last few months. He's been even more distant than usual and working late nights and going away with friends almost every weekend. I've tried talking to him but he's been impatient with both me and the kids. I also found out I was pregnant with a girl, 21 weeks. The kids are excited to have a little sister but Nick just seems so indifferent to everything and everyone. He's been missing soccer games, Lila's birthday, doctor's appointments, etc. Casey is too young to notice, but Luke and Lila are so hurt by their dad's absence. These kids are so good and they lost their mom so young and I'm infuriated that Nick is ignoring the kids like this. Last week I finally sat Nick down and told him that he needs to stop disappearing and be more present in our lives. We're going to have another child soon and before we know it, Luke and Lila will be grown up and going to college. After an hour of arguing, he screamed at me that he wished Vanessa was still alive and that I had switched places with her and died instead. He also threw in some awful comments that I need to stop pretending I'm Luke and Lila's real mom and that I'm only half the mom Vanessa was. The final straw was him saying that he never even wanted any kids with me but did it so I'd keep busy and leave him alone. I'm so beyond hurt right now, I know I'm just his second choice but I've always tried to honor Vanessa and tell Luke and Lila how lucky they were to have her as their mom. I love all of our kids more than anything and I'm just so heartbroken. Nick barely pays attention to Casey now and doesn't even acknowledge the pregnancy. He somewhat apologized this weekend and took all three kids to lunch but he won't even look me in the eye. He seems like he wants to talk but he doesn't say anything and I'm too upset to even be near him. I'm not sure where to go from here, honestly I can't even be around Nick right now and if there weren't any kids involved I'd leave and never look back. I'm not sure if he's cheating or the thought of a fourth child is stressing him out but I'm devastated and not sure how or why I should save this marriage besides doing it for the kids. Any advice is desperately needed right now. Oof, OP, first of all, I absolutely understand why you're heartbroken. I mean, the things your husband said were just horrible. He shouldn't have said any of it, of course. A second thing I want to say is don't stay in a marriage for the kids. Don't disappear from their lives, but don't stay in a marriage for the kids. That hurts them in the long run because they can see you're unhappy and you're going to be constantly fighting and that's just not a good environment for them. So if things come to divorce, you do it, but don't disappear from your kids' lives. That means all four of them. Now regarding your husband, I honestly can't think of a reason as to why he would say these awful things unless it was to push you further away, to maybe drive you to divorce or something like that. Yes, the time he's spending away from you and going out with friends could indicate cheating, but honestly I'm not so sure because of how hurtful the things he said was. We all know that cheaters are scumbag and spineless, so because of the nature and how he said and how horrible the things that he said was, I would imagine a cheater wouldn't go that way unless they had already been caught cheating to actually try to hurt you, but he's trying to hurt you preemptively. I don't think a cheater would do that, they would just try to sleaze their way through it. I don't know, I could be absolutely wrong about that, but I get the impression that your husband is going through very deep issues. 
Now you've got two choices, OP. One is you go for divorce because you wouldn't feel that you could come back from what he said. And two is you go to counseling and he gets some help and you guys try to rebuild the relationship if you think you can come back from what he said. And what do you guys think about this whole situation? What would you do if you were in OP shoes? Let me know in the comment section and now let's move on to the community comments to see what they said. Fitzwilliger says, Oh man, this is so effing heart wrenching and I honestly just want to give you a hug right now. You've got so much on your plate. In your shoes. I think I would tell him that he has a choice between therapy and divorce. Get yourself into therapy as fast as you can. You've had your heart shattered by someone you love. You've been parenting alone. You're facing the possibility of a divorce. Even if you do couples counseling, individual therapy needs to happen. My only other piece of advice for you is to not leave the house. If it comes down to it, leaving can affect the divorce. Actually, no, I have another piece of advice for you. Consult with a divorce attorney now. Even if you're not sure you're going to go through with it, to get an idea of what you need to do during this period. Deleted says, there has got to be something else going on. Honestly, it sounds like you're describing a fair behavior. Late nights, distance, missed opportunities, disappearing every week and blaming you. There has got to be something else going on. And OP responds, this is what keeps running through my head. He's never acted like this before and I almost feel like he wants me to leave him so he doesn't feel guilty. But what has me so angry is that he's treating the kids so badly right now. What have they done to deserve any of this? God, I am so effing mad at him. Brown Eyes and Lashes says, he has two kids with Vanessa and he's going to have two kids with you. Do you think he feels resentful because his new life is taking over his old life? I can't imagine that it hurts him tremendously to realize his ex-wife is a distant memory and I can see how your new baby will serve as a physical reminder of how the years have passed. Late wife, not ex. This could be a huge stretch. I'm just speculating what my concern would be if I was in your husband's shoes. It's possibly he feels very guilty and disloyal because he moved on and built a new life. So he's lashing out on the person who helped him build this new life. You. I do want to say what you've done is amazing in that you helped to rebuild a home without disrespecting their biological mother's memory. And I have no doubt you've been an awesome mom to your children. You do not deserve such hurtful words and whatever his reason, I don't think I would be able to forget them. I really hope the best for you guys. And Opie responds, I know it still must hurt that she's gone. I couldn't imagine losing Nick so suddenly. I've tried to make sure Luke and Lila always know about their mom. Luckily, there are quite a few home videos from that time, so we make it a point to watch them on her birthday, during the holidays and the anniversary of her death. I'm not sure if having Casey and now this new baby is bringing up a lot of hurt for Nick, but reading these comments makes me think it's a possibility. But Luke and Lila miss their mom too and he's treating them like they're a nuisance, not his children who have already gone through so much. I'm just at a total loss on how to handle this without disrupting the lives of our kids. Additional information from Opie's comments. First of all, Luke and Lila are my children. They may not be my biological children, but I adopted them and I love them just the same as Casey and the baby I have inside me. Also, Lila's birthday has been the only milestone missed since this all started. I'm just so upset because of how he's treating the kids. At least Casey is totally unaware, but Luke and Lila know that their dad is choosing not to spend time with them. Lila has been crying about it and Luke is angry. I feel like I'm failing all of them, but I just can't stomach the thought of talking to Nick right now. It hurts so much. I've always feared that I'm competing with a memory. I've always known I wasn't his first choice, but I've always felt like we could make something on our own anyway. I totally understand him mourning her and missing her, but he was so cruel and hateful. I'm still the mother of her son and soon a daughter, but I've never felt as hated and like absolute trash as I did during that fight. I wish I were a big enough person to tell him that I doubt he meant what he said and I'm ready to talk or support him whenever he is, but I can't even look at him. 
Now, in case some of you are wondering, he doesn't do drugs and he's a social drinker, but nothing worries him. We live comfortably within our means, so no real stress there. And moving out is something I don't want to do. I really don't want to make the kids leave their home right now. The school year is ending and I don't want to stress them out or have their lives disrupted any more than it already has been. I feel like he said those things because he knew how much they'd hurt me. I don't know how to move forward. I suggested that he may be depressed and he told me to shut up. But this post has opened my eyes to the fact that Nick really needs to get back to therapy. I feel like it could be a number of things, but I know he's struggling with something so I hope therapy can help. Alright, well the community did give OP a lot to think about and OP came to the conclusion that therapy is the answer. So let's move on to the update to see how this story ends, but of course before that, here's another one of my playlists for you to enjoy after this video. Now let's move on with the update. I'm not sure if anyone remembers my original post, but I got some PMs asking to update and I found this place really helpful before. There's been a lot that has happened and there was no way to mention it all without writing a novel, but I'll do my best. So I gave Nick a letter the day after I made my post, thanks to the commenter who suggested this. I tried to explain how hurt I was by what he said and I wasn't sure how we'd gotten to this place. I also tried to explain that I knew he was still in so much pain from Vanessa's death and I would never try to replace her. Even though I tried to be understanding of his grief and likely depression, I didn't sugarcoat how badly hurt I was by what he said to me. I know grief is extremely complex, but it doesn't excuse telling your pregnant wife you wished she was dead. It was a hard letter to write, but I tried to put forward some kind of resolution. If he meant what he said, then we'd divorce as amicably as possible for the kids. If he didn't mean it and was just lashing out, then we had to get couples counseling and he needed to get back to individual therapy if he wanted to stay together. Nick took the letter and locked himself in the guest room to read it. He didn't come out until the next morning, but he told me he needed to go away for a while and think. So he packed a bag, told the kids he had a business trip and left that afternoon. Honestly, I figured our marriage was done as soon as he left. Luke and Lila knew something was up, but I just kept telling them that their dad had a big project for work and would be back soon. They were both upset. Neither of them really believed the story about Nick's trip. So I set up some emergency sessions with their therapist so both of them would have someone to talk with. Nick was gone for over a week. There were a few short phone calls to ask how I was and to talk to the kids, but it was a lot of radio silence during that time. He came home one afternoon when Luke and Lila were still at school and said he needed to talk. I figured he was going to ask for a divorce. He told me he felt very guilty for being happy with his life now and like he was dishonoring Vanessa by living this new life with me. The guilt and sadness made him want to pull away and he hoped I'd let him, which I did. I was scared and didn't say anything until it was too bad not to. And then the fight happened. I blame myself for not communicating this. He said he didn't mean the things he said and felt ashamed after he said them, but he just wanted me to leave him so that neither of us would be hurt anymore. I guess I was just expecting to hear that, but it didn't make me feel better. After reading my letter, I guess it really drove home how much he had hurt the kids and me, so he left to see if he could fix himself and get back on track. He admitted he'd been really depressed and wanted and needed help. I told him I meant what I said in the letter and that if he wanted to work through it, I would work with him. He was more emotional than I've ever seen him, so I believed he really was sorry for what he said. So we've been in marriage counseling and he's back in individual therapy as well. He still has a lot of guilt about Vanessa and I'm still hurting from everything he said and did, but I feel like we're slowly making progress with rebuilding the relationship. A lot of people brought up the fact that my life with Nick so closely mirrors what he had with Vanessa and that's something we've been dealing with a lot in therapy. Obviously it wasn't intentional, but it subconsciously put us both on edge. Him wanting for something bad to happen and me thinking I'd never measure up. We've also been to family sessions with Luke and Lila's therapist and it's been very helpful. Both of them told me talking to their therapist helps a lot, so I've made sure they have a weekly appointment. As terrible as the situation was for Nick and me, I feel like Luke and Lila have been amazingly mature and wonderful throughout the whole thing. I am so, so proud of them. Nick is really trying to make up for the things he missed while he was checked out and he's been great with the kids. 
I've been having a lot of complications with my pregnancy, but Nick has stepped up to help with everything. He's been to every doctor's appointment and has been very supportive of the pregnancy since he came back. I know he has an extreme amount of guilt from saying he never wanted Casey or the new baby and he's really been trying to make up for that. We're all going to stay in therapy as long as we need to, which is probably going to be a long, long time, but I feel more confident about our future as a couple and a family. I won't pretend there aren't days where I'm just really angry about what he said and how he acted, but I feel like counseling is helping us address the root issues that caused everything to happen in the first place. He's really trying to be a better father and partner, and I deeply appreciate it. Therapy has been challenging, but very helpful at the same time. The road to forgiveness is a long one and all that, but I'm hopeful it'll work out for us in the end. I feel like we're on the right path. Well, Opi, it certainly seems like you are, so I'm just gonna wish all of you the best in the future. Hopefully you all can heal properly and just get closer together as a family. Take care, Opi, and thank you for sharing. Now, let's finish this video with a mood booster post. This post is from the subreddit Malicious Compliance, and it's by user Local Librarian. If he says it's his, it's his. You sure you wanna go with that? This is a tale from about 10 years ago, so obviously conversations are to the best of my memory. Anywho, like most public places, our library had a lost and found box located under the desk. People could ask, did you find blah blah blah, but you know how that works. Until, as time marches on, we get a new boss. Karen seems overused, but whatever, Karen it shall be. Angry face Karen did not like our lost and found setup. Instead, things had to go on a shelf behind the desk so everyone could see everything and maybe remember that they had lost a particular item. This policy lasted maybe a week before we noticed a big problem. As public places tend to do, we attract our fair share of idiots and a-holes, including Jim. He came in one morning and upon seeing this new shelf of treasures, immediately claimed everything on the shelf was his. That glittery pink onesie? His. That well-used pacifiers? His. That one odd glove that had been sitting in the box for months? His. We all knew damn well that it wasn't his, and said so, and every time Karen would override us. If he says it's his, it's his, give it to him. Besides, he's cleaning out this stuff, so who cares? Until... The almost final straw, one of our regulars was a mom and her kid, toddler age. Could walk, but had a stroller just in case. Usually well behaved, and always had Mr. Giraffe with him. And one day, Mr. Giraffe somehow got left behind. We immediately called the mom. They hadn't even made it home yet and the kiddo was having a meltdown. She says she's turning the car around and should arrive in about 20 minutes. No worries, we'll take good care of him. Showed kiddo a picture of Mr. G checking out a book. Disaster averted, or so we thought. Karen decrees that Mr. G be placed on the shelf with everything else, just in time for a whole gym to spot it and declare it was his. The entire building staff is yelling that it is not his, mom is on her way to get it, etc. But Karen will not be moved. She hands it over anyways because he says it's his. Sure enough, mom comes and no Mr. G, but we know where it is. Someone gets Karen out of her office and as a group heads straight for Jim. Demand he returned their giraffe and of course he has no clue what we're talking about. Jim tried to claim that Mr. G was a chew toy for his dog, not that any of us believed him of course. Anyway, the strange thing about kids sometimes is that they see closer to the ground and sure enough Mr. G was poking out of Jim's backpack. Kiddo grabs it with a shout of joy and all Karen can do is stammer, but 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 he said it was his. While the rest of us were saying, we told you it wasn't. Now, you would think we're done, but we haven't gotten to the malicious compliance yet. Well, here we go. Shortly after the giraffe incident, Karen and Jim are still playing their games. Karen heads to a conference and leaves behind a very distinctive, very expensive looking water cooler or tumbler thing. Bigger than a one cup morning commute mug, but not a big jug either which Jim immediately claims as his. I swear, he was almost hopping with glee at his latest find. A week later, Karen returns, only to find that Jim has her cooler. She tries to confront him and he says, But all I have to do is say it's mine and they have to give it to me. That's the rule. 
We finally got our box beneath the desk that afternoon and it took a while to break Jim's habit. Every day, did anybody turn in, um... The answer was either no or sure, what did you lose? What does it look like? Took a while but he finally quit asking. And yes, Jim had other issues but they don't seem to fit anywhere. Like the daily blizzard of powder in the man's restroom. Damn Jim, if you need that much powder, see a doctor. Well, Jim may have been powdery, but he was absolutely right. It was her rule and they had to give it to him. Thanks for sharing, OP. And that's it for today's video. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch it. Now, if you've gotten to this point in the video, I assume that you like these stories that I'm reading out. So here are a couple more that you might enjoy. And if you don't have any time to watch another story right now, save it for later. And also, don't forget to hit that subscribe button.